Yep, I know, there are tons of videos about this mesh, but everything I did so far and almost everything I've seen on the internet so far is focusing on the different parts of the movement. So the videos are telling you what to do with your hip, what to do with your elbow, how to hold the racket, what to do with the shoulder and so on. I think it's good and also important to know about the different key points of a movement, especially for coaches and know what's happening during a smash. But in my experience, all these advice have two big problems. First of all, you can only focus on one movement at a time. So if I tell you focus on your hip, 100% of your focus goes to your hip. Now if I tell you focus on the elbow, all the focus goes into the elbow. And maybe everything you did different before in terms of your hip movement goes away again. So it is very hard to change a movement if you want to fix every single point of that movement. And when you do that, if you focus on every single part of the movement, then you have the problem afterwards to put all these movements back together. And that will most likely result in a movement that looks more like a robot than a fluent badminton player. I also made the experience many times that if I focus on these single parts of the movement, I don't have real progress in developing a good and powerful smash or also any other shot. In today's video, I want to show you a different approach with three other key points that almost no one talks about and that in my eyes can make a huge difference and also give you way more progress, give you a fluent movement and that you can easily check if you are a coach, but also if you are practicing yourself. The first key point I want to talk about is nothing that you can see but can hear and what I'm talking about is the sound of impact. Now for comparison we just want to listen to a few different smashes and you tell me afterwards if you heard a difference. So I think it was quite easy to hear that some of the smashes were not as powerful because there was a lot of uh, slicing or cutting in the impact, there was not a clear and crisp sound, whereas other smashes sounded already very powerful. At the moment of impact, you want to tighten the grip, you want to have an explosive rotation. And if you do all those things, that will result in a very loud and clear and crisp sound of impact. So this is a very good sign that you can also control after every shot, how did my shot sound and if uh, you had a very clear and crisp sound, try to reproduce that sound again. Of course, it's not only important how your smash sounds, but also where you hit it. Because you want to hit it high up, you want to hit it steep down. So the point of impact is super important as well. Here many years I try to coach things like try to hit it at the highest point, try to stretch out your arm, try to get your hitting shoulder up and try to rotate straight forward. But once again, I had the problem that I was focusing on single movements. The easy solution is just the cue to focus on the steepness of your smash. So if you're able to hit with a clear sound and hit it steep down, then you can almost be certain that you're playing a quite solid smash at the moment. So I think a good exercise for the beginning is standing right at the net. Someone is throwing shuttles to you or feeding them and then you hit it steep down right behind the net. So try to get as much angle in as possible and that will force you to stretch out to have all these key points that I just mentioned in terms of shoulder, elbow, grip, etc, etc. Um, but you're just focusing on one single thing that is hitting with the steep angle. And when you practice from a more realistic situation from the rear court, also draw yourself a line or set yourself a target how steep your smashes should be. And then also focus once again on the two points, the sound and the steepness. And um, we haven't talked about the maybe most important thing about hitting with power, rotation of the arm. So maybe you can hit a powerful smash with a good sound, with a steep angle, but without any rotation. First of all, let's see if you can judge if there is any rotation in the movement or not and watch the following smash. So to be honest, I couldn't see anything what happened up here without any slow motion function and it just goes too fast. There's too much speed in the movement up here and hard to judge if or how much rotation is in the shot. But there's one clear indicator that tells me that in that smash was not so much rotation and the movement was not that good. And the key here is the end position of the racket. So I know that if I rotate explosively outwards, the racket will also come back again and this is something that I will see down here with a powerful smash. So compare these two movements now on the left side you see a smash without much rotation also with a little bit turned grip and the racket ends here 
On the other side you see a smash with a lot of forearm rotation where the racket bounces back up again in the end. So this is also the third and final tip. Focus not so much on what's happening during the movement, but focus more on the start and the end position. Because this is very easy to judge, very easy also to correct and to adjust. So the starting position with the elbow behind the body, racket pointing up, the other arm up in the air, and there you can also focus on the right grip, so having a very relaxed and loose V-grip. So this is the start, and at the end, like I said, I want to be here. The racket points up, my arm here right in front of my right side as a right-handed player. I don't want to swing through here. And if I'm able to hit a smash, once again with a good sound, with a good angle, and if I end here, I'm almost certain that the movement was actually very good with a lot of rotation in it. So if you want to get from the starting position into that end position, you have to accelerate straight forward, use rotation and get the racket up here again by that rebound, by that bounce from an explosive rotation. So once again, I was not talking specifically about movements of rotation or anything like that. I was just focusing on the end result of the movement. And yeah, I was talking about some internal cues for the starting position, but here I'm also standing, I have time and I don't have to coordinate these different parts. So fix the starting position, set the end position, and you have a good chance of creating a really high quality movement for your smash or clear or any other shot where you know where the starting and end position should be. So all these key points or so-called cues that I just showed you are not internal, so not focusing on the movement itself, but on something externally. For example, the sound point of impact or on something like the result of my movement, so the end position. And the biggest advantage of those kind of cues, so-called external cues, is that I can put many different movements into one advice. So like I said, I don't have to coach the elbow, the hip, the grip, etc., etc., but I'm just giving in one word, one key point, and then many times everything falls in place without saying too much. The movement stays together and I can create a more fluent and dynamic movement. There is also plenty of scientific evidence that these external cues are way more effective in terms of learning a technical movement or a motor skill. And if you want to learn more about that, I just can recommend you to follow Nick Winkleman or also check out his book, The Language of Coaching. There he is going a lot more in detail on how these external cues work and why they are so much more effective than focusing on internal things and single parts of the movement. I will link all the infos about that and also a very interesting podcast episode down in the description below. So um, yeah, make sure to check that out if you want to learn more about that. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching and also a huge shout out to all my new Patreons that follow me on my Patreon channel. Uh, your support means a lot to me, helps me also to create that high quality content. And if you have any wishes for future videos, let me know it in the comments below or contact me via Patreon. Same game as usual before you jump off. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and then see you next time. Bye bye.